You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hello, Mr. Morgan. Ferdy. Nice to see you, sir. Where's Daggett? Uh, Mr. Daggett? Mm -hmm. uh, the table in the corner. Uh, he got here a few minutes ago. Good. I'd like to see a dinner menu. Uh, I don't have much of an appetite. A drink, then. The usual. Yeah, make it the good stuff. Of course. Harold? One tequila with lime, table three. Coming right up. He's here, boss. Well, well. How you doing, Dane? You wanted to see me? Yeah, sure. You know Ben and Jimmy. Dane. Hiya. Boys. And Iris and Sherry. Hi. Hello. Pull up a chair. No, thanks. Go ahead. Take a load off. I thought you wanted to talk. I do, I do. Mr. Daggett wants you should sit down. I'll stand. Now listen. That's all right, Ben. He doesn't feel sociable. I don't have all night. Well, we can't talk here. How's your drink, sweetheart? What? Oh, fine, Bernie. Order another one. Make it champagne all around. Ooh, champagne. Are we celebrating? That's right. A regular celebration. What's the occasion? The six-month anniversary of a wonderful partnership. Come on, Dane. We'll go to my office. You too, Jimmy. Ben. Stay here and keep the ladies company, like I told you. Okay, boss. After you. Age before beauty. That's a good one. Come on in, Dane. What's a bodyguard for? We don't have any secrets in here, do we, Jimmy? Not on your life. Sit down. Have a cigar. I'll take a napkin. What for? My shoe. <laughs> you and your shoes. Always got a brand new pair. What's the matter? You see a piece of lint on them? Jimmy, give him your handkerchief. Huh? Do it. Okay, boss. There. There. That's better. So, what's on your mind, Bernie? Oh, I thought we should have a little sit-down. Something wrong? What? No, no. Business is jumping. A real healthy cash flow. Most of it from my joints. Yeah, well, see, that's just it. I'm feeling generous, so I thought I'd make you an offer. Forget it. Wait a while. I'm talking cash. I buy you out. You walk away with enough dough to live the high life. I already live the high life. Yeah, yeah, sure you do. But think about it. You could set up a new business, anything you want. I have a business. Now listen, Dane. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Thanks for the warning. You want my answer? It's a big fat no. Don't waste my time, Bernie. Uh, I'm out of here. Not on your life. That's a laugh. A two-bit mug with a heater in his pocket. Sit down, Dane. Tell him to keep his hands where I can see him or I'll ventilate that cheap suit, but fast. Cheap? It's a Versace. We're not through here. Read my lips. N-O. Dane, Dane, Dane. I thought we had a good thing going. See this 38, Jimmy? Out of my way. Put the piece away, Dane. You're hurting my feelings. You heard the boss. Stay out of your pocket. You too, Bernie. Hands on that desk. Anything you say, Dane. I'm backing out the other door. I see this mug stick his head in the alley. I'll blow it off. Clear? You're getting yourself in an uproar. You need more than a clown in a cheap suit to put the squeeze on me. Maybe so. Now, Ben! You should have looked behind him. Good shooting, Ben. Just like you told me, Mr. Daggett. Now, get this punk out of my office. What do you want we should do with him? Dump him with the rest of the garbage. Jimmy, clean up the blood. He's leaking all over my Persian rug. Right, boss. You got it, Mr. Daggett. Meet Bernie Daggett. A successful West Side businessman.
He's just concluded a merger with a partner who has certain investments and a preference for two-tone footwear. Make that had, because the owner of those shoes is now officially out of business. Said business will continue, of course, under different ownership. But what of the gray and black wingtips? They're brand new, with a shine so bright you could use them for mirrors. It would be a shame to let them go to waste. But never fear, a certain Nathan Edward Bledsoe of the Bowery Bledsoes is about to recycle them. At the moment, a few long blocks from here, Nathan just happens to be looking for a new pair of treads, because the ones he's wearing are falling apart. He doesn't know it yet, but his search for a warm place to sleep and a bottle of forgetfulness is about to end. Dane shoes will carry him out of his misery and straight into the twilight zone. And now, The Twilight Zone, and our story, Dead Man's Shoes, starring Bill Smitrovich, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Mmm. Oh. Uh, give me a swig, will you, oh. Nate? Sorry, Chips. All gone. Well, let's go get another one. Oh, uh, you go. I'm going to turn in for the night. But it's early. Besides, I don't I don't got no more money. Go pay and handle some. Move your head. What for? So as I can toss this bottle in the trash. Two to one says you can't make it. You got to have money to gamble, remember? Oh. <laughs> you missed. Uh, I guess we better clean it up. <laughs> clean it up. That's a good one. <laughs> now you done it. Somebody called the cops. Wait. That ain't a cop car. Okay, Jimmy. The coast is clear. Dump them. Where? Under the fire escape by the trash. What's he got in the bag? Quiet, quiet. Keep your head down. Okay, Ben. Done it. Let's go. Let's go. Mr. Daggett said to come right back. So long, Dane. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Will you look at that? They drove all the way down here just to dump their garbage. That ain't garbage, you moron. Then what? What do you think? You mean? Go, go check it out. Maybe maybe he's got a ring on his finger or something. Oh, no. I ain't messing with no... Dead body. You chicken? Yeah, I'm chicken. What's that sticking out? I don't see nothing. Wait here. What is it? Can you beat that? Just what I needed. What? Guy's got a pair of shoes on. Brand new. I wouldn't touch him if I was you. My size, too. Careful, Nate. You're fooling with evidence. Look at that. Perfect. Wonder if there's anything in the pockets. Nate, we gotta get out of here, I tell you, before they hang it on us. No wallet. Oh, nothing except for this key. Hmm. Number 621, Mayfair Apartments. Hey, I know where that is. Pretty swanky. Hey, where you going? To check out my new digs. <laughs> Fair apartments. <laughs> Dorman, would you get me a cab? Certainly, ma'am. Taxi! Next in line over here. Where's she going? 
West 84th. Ma'am, here you go. Thank you. Now this is for your trouble. Thank you, ma'am. Watch your fingers. Hey, fella, where you going? This building is for residents only. Yeah, sure, pal. So sue me. Apartment number 621. Nice place. Dane, I'm so glad you're here. I was just painting my toenails. Where were you? Who are you? That's rich. Who am I, she says. What do you want? Not you, that's for sure. Better get out of here, Buster. I'm not kidding. Now where's the liquor? Right over there. That's Dane's tequila. Oh. If he comes back and finds out you touched his stuff, he'll kill you. Sure he will. Do you hear what I said? He'll... he'll kill you. For real. Oh, thanks for telling me, Wilma. Who told you my name? You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm going in the bedroom to get some clean clothes after I take a nice hot shower. And you know what you're gonna do? What? You're gonna fix me another drink. I am. And use the good stuff. The gold reserve. <gasps> but that's... That's what? N nothing Oh, and Wilma? Yes? Don't even think about leaving. You'd never make it downstairs. Uh. Mm, shirt, socks. And a suit. Think I'll try the pinstripe. It's me, Wilma. Wilma? No, I can't talk any louder. Listen, is Dane there? Well, where is he? What do you mean you don't know? All right, do me a favor. Call me as soon as you do. Thanks, Bernie. Where is he? Who? Dane! Dane? Uh, I don't know who that is. Oh, yes, you do. Uh, I don't. Honest. Then what are you doing here? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. You walked in here with his shoes on. Nobody else wears shoes like Dane's. I don't remember. Well, maybe this will refresh your memory. Hey! What are you pointing a gun at me for? I don't know what you're talking about, lady. I, I, I found the shoes. At least I think I did. You mean you oh. stole them? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I stole them, okay? Where? Please, miss, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about nothing. What do you know? N nothing. You gotta believe me. I, I ought to shoot you right now. Busting in here like you own the place. Please. I don't want any trouble. All right, but you get dressed and get out of here. Move. Okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. Hurry up! I just gotta put my shoes on. Those aren't your shoes. Yeah? Is that right? And what about the gun? I suppose that's not mine either. What? Keep away from me! Give me that thing. Ow! You shouldn't play with guns, Wilma. You might get hurt. Hand me the towel. What? The bath towel. I see some dust on my shoe. <laughs> Just get out, please. I won't say anything. Where's the other one? I don't know what you mean. The automatic. What do you think I mean? In the closet. 
the shoulder holster. Full clip. Good. What are you standing there for? I thought I told you to make me a drink. Look, mister, I don't know what you want here. A drink, I said. Okay, okay. What kind? What do I have to do, break your arm? The only thing I ever drink. Tequila with lime. Dane's due back any second. I'm warning you, for your own sake, if you know what's good for you... I know what's good for me. Please, don't touch me. Please, don't! Oh. Who am I, baby? Oh, it's not possible. No? Let's try that again. Dane? But you're not him. You're not. Be quiet. What have you done with him? What happened? What? Oh. Wait. Wait, you gotta tell me. Please. Tell you what? I have to know. Later. Where are you going? I got a little unfinished business to take care of. Where's Bernie? Bernie? Bernie Daggett. At the club. That's what I thought. You wait here. I'll be back after it's over. And don't answer the door. For your own good. Sir? Yeah? Uh, did you get the message from Mr... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. What's the matter? Their problem? Uh, nothing, sir. I thought you were someone else. Oh, is that so? Like who? Another one of our residents. Let me guess. The guy in 621? That's right. Uh, you must know Mr. Morgan. Yeah, you might say that. Uh, just visiting. What's it to you? Oh, well, nothing at all. It's just... Just what? Well, that suit and... Those shoes. Mr. Morgan has a pair exactly like them. No kidding. Must be quite popular these days. Very smart. I like them. You got a handkerchief? Why, yes, I'm sure I do. Uh, here you are. Clean one, is it? Oh, yes, sir. Good. Got a scuff on the toe. You do? It doesn't show from here? Shoe shine stands closed, huh? Uh, yes, sir. At this time of night. Yeah, here you go. Here's a tip. Oh, that's not necessary, really. It's the concierge's job, too. Listen, get a shoe shine boy who works around the clock. Some people care about how they look. Right, uh, I'll do that. Hey there, Mr. Morgan. Get a cab for you? No, thanks, Tommy. Oh, begging your pardon, you're not Mr. Morgan. Were you sure about that? Get you a cab if you like, sir. That's okay, Tommy. I feel like walking. Clean shirt, new shoes, and I know just where I'm going to. Sure looks like you do. Yep. Clothes make the man. <laughs> That's what they say. Hello, Mrs. Tomlin. Oh, watch yourself. Why, thank you, Thomas. Yes, sir. May I help you? I'd like a table. Do you have a reservation? How about that one over there? In the corner. Next to Daggett. I'm afraid that table is reserved. It is, huh? If you would care to wait at the bar, perhaps something will open up. Well, here you go, Ferdy. This should take care of it. That table open now? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, I should have known a man like you would have a reservation. Yeah, it must have slipped your mind, huh? Right this way. Let me pull the chair out for you. And what may I bring you, sir? The usual. The usual? Tequila. Really? Any particular brand? The good bottle, under the bar, with a slice of lime. Certainly, sir. Right away. Ferdy. Yes, Mr. Deckard. Bring us another bottle of champagne. 
Of course. Who's that, anyway? You mean the gentleman with the... shoes? I'm afraid I don't know, Mr. Daggett. Never saw him in here before. Nor have I. I'll get you your champagne. Friend of yours? No friend of mine. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah, boss? That fella over there. You seen him? Negative. What about you, Benny boy? Never set eyes on him. Well, he seems to know us. What's he smiling for? He ain't looking at me, honest. <sighs> of all the nerve. Just some lush. Forget it. Yeah, but a familiar lush. Something about him. Maybe he's looking at me. <gasps> Iris? It could be. Or ain't I worth staring at anymore? Oh, nobody said that. Said what? Oh, nothing. I just said I was leaving you. Yeah, sure. Jimmy, why don't you go over there and... See? You never listen to me. I'm all ears. I said I was leaving you, Bernie. Sure you are. I mean it. We're Splitsville. There's only one way people leave me, honey. Feet first. Drink up, everybody. Let's finish this bottle. Sorry to tell you, boss, but that guy's still looking at us. Like he's got a secret or something. Oh, he's driving me crazy. All right, that's it. Can't even have a drink in peace. Ben. Yeah? Invite him over. What if you don't want to come? Then get rid of him. No problem. Hey. You talking to me? Mr. Daggett wants you. Oh, isn't that nice? Makes me feel all warm inside. He wants you should join him. Well, what do you know? An invitation from the great Bernie Daggett at his own personal table. Are you sure? He loves you should join him. Oh, I don't know what to say. Don't say nothing. Just do it. Well, if you put it that way, I accept. Here he is, boss. Well, well. Allow me to introduce myself. Hello, Bernie. You know me? Well, everyone does. By reputation. Oh, I get it. Sit down. Thanks. Get the man a chair. You, uh, celebrating something? You might say so. Big business deal? Who told you that? Friend of mine. That right. What are you drinking? Tequila with lime. What did you say? Something wrong with that? No, no. It's just kind of funny. Is it? A coincidence is all. I had a friend drank the same stuff. Well, no kidding. What happened to him? What do you mean? Well, you said had. Say, what's your name? Kilroy. Look, buddy, when Mr. Daggett asked you a question... Easy, Jimmy. I'm sure he didn't mean no disrespect. What line are you in? Restaurants. Just like Dane. Isn't that something? But tonight, I'm a messenger boy. And I've got a message for you, Mr. Daggett. Well, go ahead. Let's have it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no can do. What do you mean? I have instructions to deliver the message personally. In private. It's uh, kind of a touchy matter. You understand? And who's this message from? Afraid I can't say. Here you are, sir. Another bottle of champagne on ice and one shot of tequila with a slice of lime. On me. Here you go, Polly. Yeah. Thanks. Think nothing of it. Anything else here? I'll let you know. Yes, sir. Nice drink. Glad you like it. Nice place. Real nice. You own it? This guy. What did he look like? Which guy? The one that gave you the message. Well, sometimes, Mr. Daggett, it's my business to forget things, not remember them. Okay, messenger boy, let's go. Ben, wait here with the girls, keep an eye on things. You know what I mean. Don't worry, boss, I got you covered. It has to be private. It will be. My office? So it's me. Hey, I didn't say where it was yet. Didn't you? Down the hall. The door at the end. Right.
Nice place you got here. Soundproof, too, so we can talk in private. Good idea. Come on in. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, age before beauty. <laughs> That's a good one. Jimmy, put your arms out. What for? Just till we get acquainted. Go on, Jimmy. Frisk him. Well, well. What do we got here? Well, it looks like a 38 to me. What's the matter? The monkey can't see? You got nerve bringing a piece in here? That's okay. I know how it is. A man needs protection nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know what kind of trash you'll run into. Hold it for him, Jimmy. Hey, careful with that. I'm always careful. Just till we're finished. Tell your monkey I want it back with all the bullets. Hear that, Jimmy? Absolutely. Have a seat. Cigar? Nah, I don't smoke. Good idea. Could be dangerous to your health. So could a lot of things. Yeah, looks like you got a good thing going here. I get by. Win some, lose some. I bet you don't lose very often. I try to keep my hand in the game. And what game is that? Oh, you know. Little of this, little of that. I got a string of restaurants now. That right. Strictly legit. Must be doing pretty good. Nice digs, mirror on the wall, big desk. They call it Danish modern. Hey, real oil paintings. Cost me plenty, let me tell you. See that picture there? Thomas Kincaid original. No kidding. Of course, I got a special discount. <laughs> yeah, you paid too much. What? I have three, just like it. Picked them up at a fire sale. Guy turns him out like a factory. Doesn't even sign his name. Got a room full of brunettes to do it for him. Jimmy, make a note. Yeah, boss. See if there's a money-back guarantee on this crap. Now then, what were we saying? The message? Oh, yeah. You're monkey deaf, too? Say hot shot. Don't worry about it. When does he go back in his cage? I got no secrets from my boys. Yeah, you sure? Sure, I'm sure. And one thing first. What's that? Give me a handkerchief. You got one in your breast pocket. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to get it dirty. Hear that, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. Here you go, hot shot. There's a piece of dirt on my shoe. Maybe you should watch where you step. Right. All kinds of dirt around here. Where'd you get those shoes? I borrowed them. From who? A friend of mine. What's your friend's name? I think you've met. What's your real name, mister? My name? That's for my friends. Are we friends yet? I don't know. Are we? Yeah, I'd buy you a drink, invite you to my office, and all because you got a message to deliver. If that ain't friendly, I don't know what is. Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. Mr. Daggett to you. How'd you get it clean so fast? What? The rug on the floor? What about it? Well, blood's hard to get out, isn't it? Say... What are you inferring? You have to send it to the cleaners. Unless you got your own cleaners. Nickel and dime mugs who wipe up people's messes for them. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? But I know one thing. You got a bad attitude. The kind that can get you in trouble. Absolutely. You think so? Then here's what I'm gonna do, Bernie. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about another guy who had a nice thing going for him. Yeah, plenty of dough, plenty of action, restaurant uptown, only he wasn't happy. And you know why? Let me guess, people were sticking their nose in his business. Close, but no cigar. He had a partner. That meant he couldn't be number one, see? And being number one was very important to him. So he offered to buy the partner out, and when the partner refused to sell, this guy, he brought him in his office, and he killed him. Blew him away. Just like that. Or rather, he had his monkeys do it so he wouldn't get his hands dirty. It happened right here, and nobody was the wiser. Oh, it was one slick job. You're out of your mind. Only, not slick enough. He didn't get it all up. Take a look. There's still some little bits of blood on the rug around the edge, see? Jeez, I hope you didn't wash it in hot water, Bernie. That makes the stain set so it'll never come out. There'll always be traces. You know, the cops come in, put the stuff on it, the luminol, then they shine a purple light, and whatever was there, bing, there it is. Who? Who are you? I told you, a messenger. And here's the message. 
Look out, boss. He's got another piece. I thought you said he was clean. He didn't check behind my back. Anybody but a monkey knows to do that. Now take the gun out of your pocket and set it on the desk. Real slow. Better do what the man says, Jimmy. Okay. Okay. Now take the other one. The 38 you took off me and put it down on the floor. And kick it over to me. Nice and easy. Can't we talk this out? And don't go for your own gun, Bernie. Keep your hands where I can see them. That looks like you got the drop on me. You heard the man, Jimmy. Nice and easy. I'm doing it, see? But you're not doing it right, you big monkey. You put it down so the barrel's pointed at me. You're gonna go for it, aren't you, Jimmy? You just can't help yourself. So I better do something before you make a play. Uh, are you nuts? You shot Jimmy in cold blood. That's right. And now it's your turn. You won't get away with this. Not unless I take care of Ben, too. What are you talking about? There's nobody else here. He's outside in the alley. Come on, drawing a bead on the door right now. As soon as he opens it, I'm history. Unless I shoot first. What are you doing shooting holes in my door? Didn't think it would work for a second time, did you, Bernie? Ben waiting in the alley before I can back out, huh? You're crazy. Open it. Take a look. Bet I drilled him right through the stomach. At least I hope so. Takes longer to die that way. There's nobody out there, I tell you. Oh, and by the way, where's the other 38, Bernie? The one you took off me the first time. In the desk? Huh? I'd like to have it back. Dang. You are him. But it ain't possible. Say goodbye, partner. Vaya con Dios. Now, Ben! Oh. You remember the door to the alley, smart guy. Only I never do the same thing twice. You didn't think about the mirror. A two-way mirror to the next room. Too bad, Bernie. That means seven years bad luck. Got him. Nice and clean. Good shooting, Ben. You cut that pretty close. I wanted to take him out with one shot. The way you got Jimmy. Bernie, listen to me. Listen good. You want I should finish him? Wait. I'll come back, Bernie. And I'll keep coming back. Again and again. And, and sooner or later, I'll kill you. So help me. I'll, I'll kill you. Get him out of my face. Right. Drop this scumbag in the garbage. Any place you want. Just don't let me see those shoes again. Not as long as I live. With pleasure. Get some of the boys over here. We should bury Jimmy nice and proper. You got it. And remind me to send some money to his old lady. Who was this piece of junk anyway? I'll tell you something, Benny. I don't know. I really and truly don't know. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Spare change, bus fare, something to eat. Hold on. What in the... Nice pair of shoes. Huh? Nate? That you? Oh, no. No. Poor Nathan. I'm sorry. You forgive me, don't you, Nate? But I guess you won't have any use for him now. Rest in peace, buddy. Yeah, what do you know? Perfect fit. 
Spare change, sir? Ma'am? Anything at all? Hot meal? That's all I need. <laughs> yeah, and a hot bath and a change of clothes. That's all. Because I got places to go and things to do. <laughs> There's an old saying that goes, clothes make the man. And another one that says, if the shoe fits, wear it. Keep both phrases in mind should you ever find yourself on a lonely street at night. Because nothing comes without a price. And if you happen upon a pair of expensive black and gray loafers size 9, be very careful. Because they just might have a mind of their own. Try them on and chances are you'll find yourself on a long distance trek into the twilight zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hello, I'm Stacy Keach. I hope you're enjoying this edition of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. To learn more about this series, be sure to log on to our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. You'll find special discounts on our Twilight Zone audio collections, listings of our radio stations, links to other websites, and a photo gallery of our recording studio and some of our stars in action plus ways to contact us with questions or comments about the show. And for a limited time, when you log on to TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can send in for a free CD of the show. So be sure to visit us at TwilightZoneRadio.com. Dead Man's Shoes, starring Bill Smitrovich with Stacy Keach as your narrator was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for the Twilight Zone by Charles Beaumont and O.C. Rich. Heard in the cast were Meg Falcon, Christian Stolte, Rick Arthur, Alex Sopiner, Frenette Lebo, Amber Lake, Doug James, Dale Rivera, Roger Mueller, Rich Kamenek, Eddie Martinez, Tony Castillo, and Carl Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, Exum Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>